live. Okay. Okay, and we are live. Hello. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to another Exploring Photo P. Um, <laughs> so it's me, Daniel, obviously, and I'm joined by Ella today. Good morning. Once again. So we had Ella <laughs> last week, and we've got Ella again today. So welcome to another Exploring Photo P. This is the last session. Um, yeah, this is fourth and final. So, so collective. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I <laughs> hope that you guys are ready for today's session. Today, we are going to do a recap of some of the stuff we did in the com in the past weeks, and also we're going to do a Sin City style um, kind of photo, I guess you could say. All right, guys, so I'm going to switch the screens here. All right, so yes, we have Photo P open here, guys, and we're going to do a Sin City style photo, and we're going to recap some stuff. As you can see, it is hot day today, so I've got my hat on. Once oh, again. my God, I forget every Monday, <laughs> literally every so, Monday. Um, so, yes, it is hot day, guys, and yeah, and that's, a, that's about it, guys, so... Um, please let me know if you guys have any questions as we go on through this. Um, and I'm sure Ella will kind of let me know um, whilst we're doing this and we'll be able to get it. Like I said before, if uh, there's anything you want me to go over again, I can do that. Uh, however, we may not be able to go too far back just as uh, it may be difficult to kind of, you know, go back and forth on the fly. But we'll, we'll try our best uh, always. So. That's yeah, just let us know either in the chat or whatever. Well, I don't know what else. Just in the chat is fine. <laughs> Likewise, if you have any questions about anything, if something's unclear, um, then just please drop uh, us a message and uh, in, the, in the chat and we'll be able to kind of answer your questions as we go also. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So this is the fourth session. As I said, we're going to be doing the Sin City movie poster, which is completely, well, not movie poster, but photo. That's completely new. And then beyond that, we are going to uh, recap some image assets, I think, and then look at some blemishes as well, just to kind of go over each step. And we may, be, we may go over those a little bit quicker than we have in previous sessions, but that's just for the sake of the recap. However, if you do want to watch any of our sessions back, then they are all available on our YouTube page, on the very page that you're watching this now. Uh, if you just click on the Media Savvy icon, then it will come up with all our videos and you can see Exploring Photo P Session 3, Exploring Photo P Session 2, and Exploring Photo P Session 1. Um, session 1 <clears throat> was image assets of, of different types of image assets using textures and, and so on. And then Session 2 was uh, using the Clone Stamp tool and blemishes, um, being able to kind of um, use the Healing Brush tool to kind of mask over things um, like blemishes and then using the clone stamp tool to be able to kind of erase damage on, on, on old photographs. Then obviously last week's session we did a horror movie style poster which came out really cool and this session yeah we're going to do the, the Sin City thing as I said and then we'll do a little recap guys. So okay without further ado let's get into it. First things first guys if you go to where the YouTube video is um, here use the healing brush tool to kind of just popped up mask sound there and what we're going to do guys is we're going to go down into where the description is there you can see and you've got sin city resources image assets and then you've got your blemishes as well i would like you to click on the sin city resources there guys it's going to pop up with the google drive here and it's going to have these two pictures here that's all we need two resources and they're nice and easy because we're going to do a lot of custom made stuff for this one so if you could just open those two then um then if you could just download them so what you're going to do is where that drop down window is there you're going to right or you can left click on that and then you're going to go down to download and then once you downloaded that they should be in your downloads folder guys okay cool so if you could do that for me please and then once you have done that we're going to go to file and guys just let me know if i go over anything too quickly because when I'm in the room, I have a tendency maybe to talk a little bit fast. So just let me know if that happens at any time and I'll slow down for you or I'll go over anything again. So yeah, we've got a file and open. And here we are. 
it's already there for me but if you didn't have that you just click downloads and then it's this one here you just double click on that and there you go bam you've got it perfect so what we're going to do is we are going to click on this one here the second source image and you're going to press open and there we go so we've got our nice kind of cool sin city um style image all right guys perfect and what we are going to do is we're going to make this look nice and cool obviously in sin city if you've seen the movie sin city it's kind of like a neo-noir effect so if you haven't seen it in city sin city they're not the first people to do it it's been done before you're going to kind of isolate certain colors but you want to give it that kind of noir effect where you want it to look kind of black and white and dark and shadowy so that's what we're going to do to this image we're going to add various stuff to make it kind of give it that neo noir feel okay first things first guys we are going to go down to this uh adjustment layer the 50 50 one and we are going to go to gradient map there and i want you to left click on that one so bottom right um i'm not sure if my camera is blocking that at all but it's just the one that looks like a little oreo there it's like a 50 50 it's half black half white you just left click on that and you go to gradient map fantastic and it's just going to come up black and white like that that's absolutely perfect that's what we want excuse me and there you go guys so there we've got a pretty plain looking um black and white kind of gradient map there but that's that's all we need for now and we are going to kind of start to add stuff to make this um look a little bit more popping i guess we could say for like a better word all right, so the next thing we're going to do, guys, is we are going to use a adjustment layer. And we're going to maybe use some um, levels. Let's use that. Okay, brilliant. So what we're going to do is we're going to just push up the contrast because this looks like a very grayscale now, but it doesn't kind of have that noir feel. So we're just going to kind of up the contrast just to kind of well, not wash it out, that's the wrong word, but to kind of just pump up some of the whites of the image so i'm going to move the gray along and actually i'm going to move the grid down slightly yeah there we go if we move the gray to the right very slightly it makes it a bit more black and white it's a bit less grayscale and it gives it a bit more black and white then i'm going to move the uh, white to the left there you go and you can see that it's it's starting to kind of pop the white out a bit and i would say about that you don't want to do too much so there I've moved, so the gray is on 0.6, and the white is on uh, 213, guys. And I'm quite happy with that. So what that does, it makes the black more black, so the, yeah. there's more gray values that become darker, exactly. and then more gray values become white after that. So that's kind of how it sort of has that higher contrast look to it. Um, definitely looks sort of darker and grittier. That's the one, absolutely. So guys, as you can see, something else that this has done for us is it has brought out the light there. She, there's obviously, there's a light source. Looks like she's side lit. So um, in lighting, you know, you have a kind of, usually have like a, for this, you'd have like a three point light and setup. So you'd have your fill light, which will maybe be on the right hand side here. And you would have your rim light or your kick light, which would be maybe somewhere on the side here but that would be a much smaller direct light that would be maybe lighting a hat here and then you would have your backlight as well which is kind of just lighting the back of her and the, like her body i guess somewhat but the main light source which would be the um the, the fill light i guess the, that that one is going to be on the right hand side and you can see it's beaming onto the side of her face because you see you've got a strong light source here and when we've used that levels it's just pushed it that's your key light sorry not your fill light uh so yeah the key light has just kind of pushed into her face here and it's side lit her very nicely there and we've just accentuated that by using the levels so we've just accentuated that key light there all right so now we've done that guys i'm going to i'm going to leave that there i'm not going to clip it yet because i want it to be there um what we're going to do is we are going to make a duplicate layer here so I want you to right click on the background and we're gonna left click on duplicate layer there guys, okay? 
So one more time, we're just going to right click on that background and we're going to left click on duplicate layer. And then we're going to call this, let's say, I'm going to call this blur layer because we're going to blur this one. It's just, you can, you don't have to call it that. It's just so I know exactly what it's going to be. Now on this blur layer here, what we're going to do guys is we're going to go to filter and we're going to go down to blur. So we're going to pick the second one. And once you've done that, we're going to go down to Gaussian blur there. And if you could just click on that one for me guys, absolutely fantastic. And then that looks quite intense, that blur there, but don't worry about that because we're going to sort that out. And then I'd like you to go to type in 10 PX here guys for me, if you can. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then that looks ridiculously blurry. So we've got our background layer and then we've got our blur layer here, guys. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to reduce this opacity from 100% down to about 30%. Okay, so make sure you've got your left click on your blur layer here. You can already see it's starting to look much better. And I'm going to put that on about 30%. Maybe less than that, maybe like 25, right? And then 25. So you can see that it gives it like quite um, almost like a soft focus kind of effect. It's just kind of softened, softened up the image. Obviously, when we put up the highlights, um, it made it very kind of like high contrast and it, it, it took it from being really grayscale to effectively black and white. And we've kind of just softened it up a bit by putting a, a duplicate in the layer and adding a Gaussian blur. And it's just kind of softened up this image a bit. It's made it look slightly kind of less um, direct and maybe a little bit less intense as well. So yeah, if you could just do that for me, guys. And then we're looking pretty good here. I'm quite happy with this so far. And next thing we are going to do, guys, is we are going to... So make sure you're doing that. We're going to kind of click off these layers and we're going to make a new layer on the top. So click on levels on that layer there. And then I want you to just click new layer for me if you can, guys. And brilliant. So we've just got a blank layer there with nothing on it. And then what I want you to do is I want you to click these eyes for me, guys. So I want you to click levels off. And then you're going to click gradient map off and blur off and then the background off. So we've just literally got blank background there totally blank and then what we are going to do guys is we are going to draw some black rectangles in here which might sound a bit crazy but if you just bear with me we'll go through it uh step by step guys so let's see so we've got a rectangle select there and now we just draw a black rectangle About that big there. Okie dokie. And we are just going to, oh, we'll be clicking that one there. And we're just going to kind of fill that. Okay, I'm going to click on that and excuse me guys, instead of putting that one there, I'm just going to go back um, one step here by pressing Control and Z. Yeah, we just click off that. But, uh, excuse me, that was my mistake there guys. Instead of the second one down there, which is a marquee uh, rectangle select, we're going to go down to the actual shape rectangle select, which is very close to the bottom. It's in the bottom left, just above the hand tool. So if you could just click on that one guys for me. And that is the shape one. The second one is the is the marquee rectangle select. So just make sure you click the shape and then you see where it says fill and it has a red color here. We're just gonna change that to a black, guys. So you see it says fill type there. We've got um, color selected. You've got a few different options here. You've got gradient, you've got pattern. So it's whatever you wanna fill your shape with. You've got the cross, which just means none. And you can see we've got color selected. So next, we are just going to go to this black here. And we are going to 
draw a couple of rectangles in here guys make sure they're nice and thin so as you can see that that's it like that you want it to be the whole length of the canvas i'm gonna go over there because we're slightly short and then bam i'm just gonna select the move tool i'm gonna move this ever so slightly just so it fits the full image and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna press duplicate several times so we've got a good amount of these i would say we want about six or seven of these to be honest guys so let's just make those now okay duplicate like i said we want about six or seven Okay, so six, I'm not going to rename them now because we're going to merge them in a second. So we're going to get all these layers and we're going to stick them together. So just for now, we're not going to do anything with the, the names of the layers yet. Okay, um, so just bear with me, guys. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to move that one down. We want them to be like slightly apart from each other. But so they're all about the same space apart from each other that's kind of what we want it's going to be like this kind of black blinds how you doing ella good how are you doing <laughs> i'm okay yeah not too bad i have a good feeling about this one yeah i think it's gonna look quite cool i think so um so we'll see how I'm trying not to interrupt your flow too much. <laughs> That's okay, don't worry about that. Um, we're just getting these nice and spaced out. Okie dokie. Like, it doesn't matter if they're slightly, like, if they're not completely symmetrical, don't worry about that. And that might actually add a little bit to it, because if they're not completely symmetrical, um it'll it would probably look maybe a little bit more natural even uh, so just kind of get it roughly roughly the same if you do want it the same do the is i think there's um like the um like a line and um is it disperse tools that um uh, right spread them sure, to yeah, yeah, equal yeah. things um i think I can see them on the top there. Sure. Can you see where there's like those little rectangles and stuff? Uh, yes, I can, yeah. That's distribute, sorry. Um, yeah, so I know that it's pretty easy to do that on Photoshop. You just select all of your layers and then there's like a, you know, say if you wanted to distribute them equally. Yeah. And it does that automatically for you. So there you go, yeah. And that would be from so the top layers here, of course, right? Um, those are the align ones. They're usually with the align ones um, on Photoshop. So I'm going to have a look on Photoshop. Equal gaps. Uh, oh, what was that? We've got equal gaps. Oh, that sounds promising. Yeah, maybe that one. We'll select them. I'm going to just try it. Oh, is that that? Is it that little, little rectangle? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, hey, you could try that. Equal gaps. Um, try the, the vertical one. Oh, there you go, yeah. Get yeah. that one. Did it. But you've got to make sure you've got all of the layers highlighted. Yeah. So we're going to go through that then, guys. I just want to kind of show you guys that. So they were quite close in general, but I've got my layer one selected here, which is the original layer. I've got these six other layers here, guys, okay? So what I'm going to do to make sure that these are all selected is I'm just going to press my shift button. And then I'm going to double click. Well, I'm not going to double click. I'm going to left click on that. And then you can see that it highlights all of my layers here. So from layer one to layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, and then layer seven. And if you could look at this top here, this top screen here next to where it says PNG, SVG, you've got alignment options, which is would be good if you're doing text uh, to kind of align your text in a certain position. But there also is equal gaps. And there's two different ones. There is horizontal and vertical. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this vertical one here. And you are just going to select that for me, please. Uh, make sure you've got all of your layers selected. And we're going to select the equal gaps here. And bang. And then if you look at that, 
it's made us have like a select uh, <laughs> symmetrical um black <laughs> bars which is so cool um so there you go guys we've got these symmetrical black bars and now the next thing that we are going to do is you can see that all of my layers are selected here what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that and we are going to click merge layers okay so if you go slightly down and then merge layers and then it's all became layer one now there so so just to kind of show you that again guys if you press ctrl and v uh, to undo and then you can see that i've got all of my layers selected just to recap that how to do that is you would left click on the very bottom layer that you want so make sure you have layer one selected then you would hold shift and you would click the top layer and then you can see that it highlights all of them once you've done that you're going to right click on it and then we are going to go down to merge layers guys once you've done merge layers it's just going to come up as layer one and then all those layers are together i'm going to rename that and i'm going to call it um let's say this is very uh dull but let's say black bars okay because then at least we know what they we know what they are um maybe you can think of a more creative name than me but black bars that's that's effectively what they are anyway so it's 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 not uh, it's just the truth i guess so right now we're going to do some transforming on this because we've got these black bars along here but they don't really look like anything at the moment uh if you're looking at this and thinking you know what is going on <laughs> then just bear with me because it's going to get better and better it's going to slowly start to take shape so just hold, hold on with me and you'll kind of see exactly what i'm doing uh, if you just bear with me guys okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our transform option open so what we would do for that is we'd make sure we have the black bars selected we would go to edit and then we would go down to transform and then you would click i would go to free transform sorry just above transform and you would just click that and that's going to open it up we also know that the shortcut is alt control and t also guys so it's on photoshop it is control and t but because control and t in um in in in, in a chrome browser or in a windows browser explorer browser sorry that's usually a different shortcut so they've had to work their way around that i think so that's why it's alt control and t so it's slightly different but the same. Mm, i didn't realize that that's good thinking yeah so um there's a few things like that so any shortcuts that you do that you're used to from from photoshop they may not be exactly the same try them uh, the worst thing that'll happen is another window will open up in 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 in, in crawl but mm -hmm. they may be slightly different for some of them so we'll, and when we do a recap today we'll go over that in a bit more detail so if you feel like you've enjoyed the sessions and you're getting a lot out of it um but you maybe you want to kind of go through it again to kind of make sure you've fully got your bearings and don't worry about that because when we do the recap stuff it'll be a good opportunity to kind of you know go through the motions again to kind of get yourself back up to speed um so stay tuned for that obviously okie dokie then guys so what we're gonna do is we are just gonna make these a little bit bigger so you can see how i've used my transform tool here and you can see that this little arrow here the two white arrows from side to side that it's very small but i think you can see it that just means that you can extend it so you can make it bigger or smaller and we're going to hold shift so we're not going to stretch the image and that just makes it bigger or smaller like i said but if you actually want to rotate it you move to the corner of it and you see that it becomes this kind of bent arrow on each side now what we're going to do is we're going to move that about roughly 20 to 30 degrees so you're going to just slightly move it so it's facing this way and about that maybe that's a little bit more than 25 degrees but you get my meaning and you can see there that now it's bent that way which looks fine to me and then now what i'm going to do is we go to the corner once again i want you to right click and then when you've right clicked it says perspective so what we're going to do is we're going to left click on perspective and that is going to help us to kind of stretch our blinds here and we want them to be stretched so they look like they're kind of coming out as if in the same kind of direction as light would so we're just going to click on the bottom left there and we're going to stretch it like that and as you can see it gets bigger as it stretches which is what we want and then if you feel like you can't really see where you're going then it's okay you can just control the minus and zoom out 
and then we're going to pull on the left hand side just make that nice and big and scattered out still needs to be a little bit bigger there you go um right click and then we're going to go back to <clears throat> scale okay so once you've distorted a bit, we're going to go to scale because we can see that this black bar here isn't quite big enough. So we're just going to make sure that these bars actually fit by just dragging them out. We've already distorted them quite a bit, and I would say that that is looking pretty good to me. So just to recap that, guys, you want to change, your, you want to distort the perspective slightly. By doing that, you right click on it, you click on perspective, and then you kind of just drag it along. So once you've clicked on perspective perspective is effectively going to give you it's going to be able it's going to help you warp stuff so by dragging the perspective you drag kind of the angle and it makes it a bit more like loose so you can kind of effectively mold it into whichever position you want once you've done that as well we're going to click a left click back on scale and then you're just going to stretch it i am going to press the tick here because i'm pretty much done with the transform and you can see that these blue lines here, they're not going to be there. That's just because I'm clicked on the layer and it's just kind of reminded me what they actually are. Then if we go down to levels, you can see there that it's stretched over my image quite nicely. I really like how that looks. I think it looks pretty cool. So you're going to just click on your levels here, guys, and you can click back on your gradient map and your blur layer and then your background layer. And as you can see, you think, okay, I see what you're doing, but it looks like she's just been like ripped into a bunch of little pieces, <laughs> like she's been put in like a shredder or something. But don't worry, because there's a few things that we're going to do to make that really pop and stick out, okay? So we're going to move, we're going to make the opacity on this about 80, because we're going to do some more things to it, and then we're going to put the opacity back down. So just make sure that, you know, you don't um, put it down too much here, because... Once we've done this next step, you can put it down again. So just follow with me on this one. So we're going to go to first, right? Just because I'm a little bit nervous about this uh, crashing or, or whatever. So I'm just going to go to save as a PDS, <laughs> PSD here. Um, and let's have a look at that. It should just save. Yeah, and it's just saved there in our bottom left source image. We can see that. Uh, that's just so I've saved this. So in case something crashes, it's not going to, but, you know, uh, it, it, it never hurts to be... Um, cautious all right so let's see i'm going to move this opacity down to about 80 as i said okay and that seems pretty fair about 80 opacity there and if i move if i click on levels you can see but it still doesn't really look very realistic it just still kind of looks like there's a bunch of black lines on the on the on the uh the the, the um image here so what we're going to do next is going to effectively do that. Now, if I go to where it says black bars here, and if I just go to filter and blur, um, it's not going to let me do it. Or it might, but I doubt it is. So if I click it, it says layer is not editable. So the way that we can get around that is we just right click on where it says black bars and we just press convert to smart object. So once you've pressed that, then it's converted this to a smart object, guys. And then now if we go back to filter, we go down to blur and then we go to Gaussian blur. And once again, we want to make it about 10 px. So if you could do that. And there you go. And then that's kind of made that kind of nice blur there. One thing that I've missed off here, guys, which is a key step in this which I can't actually believe that I missed this bit off, is you see that, so we've got, so it's looking quite nice now and it's starting to pop a lot more. If you look, we've got that nice kind of filter over here on the, on the Gaussian blur. And now that actually does look like it's light coming into the image, right? So you've got a nice bit of light coming in here and that Gaussian blur really works now. And I'm actually gonna, so I'm gonna go back onto this Gaussian blur here. Uh, so you see now, once it's been converted into a smart object, that the opacity has gone back up to 100. That's why I said don't edit it too much. So we're going to put that opacity down to like 90. And now you can really see that really looks like lights just kind of coming from a face. You can see it's coming in the image there. It looks pretty close to what it would look like if there was a hard light behind some blinds. 
Okay. Looking good. Now, very important step here, which we did miss off, is we go back down to our gradient map. I'm going to click on the actual gradient, which is the the uh, white there. And what I want you to do, guys, is we're going to press our brush tool, and if our brush is black like it is there, we're going to make it. We're going to just zoom in to our um, character here, and we're going to move Ella's zoom call slightly out the way. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go to where her lips are here, guys, if you can see them, and we're just going to kind of open, draw these out, okay? So I'm just going to click, and you might want to make your brush slightly bigger. Okay. Let's see, we're just going to... So we're just going to, yeah, so you make sure you've got your black brush, guys. Uh, I might make that brush a little bit softer just so it's not like... Yeah, I was going to say, maybe don't have a really hard brush, otherwise it can look too harsh, it doesn't look real. Yeah. So we're just going to make make sure you pick a soft brush, guys. The one that says 24 there, you can just put the size up slightly. But yeah, we're going to use that brush there, the 24 on the right-hand side. And that brush is a little bit more effective, I think. It's just not going to look too harsh. Make sure you've got black selected. And you press brush and you go to your gradient map layer, which is maybe the one, two, it's like our third layer there, guys. And we're just going to go over the lips here. And yeah, we're going to start to slowly... Just paint these lips out of the image there. Yeah, just make sure that you're on the mask layer as well. Yeah, yeah it's super most, important yeah, exactly. to be on the, the white bit, which is the mask. Yeah, so you want to click on that left, the, sorry, right bit there, which is just the mask, as I said, that's very important. You might need a smaller brush for like the more precise areas and yeah. stuff, so... Yeah, so once think... you've got the bulk of it, guys, to get the more precise areas, as Ella said, we can reduce the brush size and we can get a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go down to about six and I'm going to soft mechanical that one there to about 12. I'm just going to lower it to like 10. And we're going to once again press Control and Plus. Oop. To, yeah, we're going to press Control and Plus just to kind of zoom in slightly and then go down. And you can see this is just a cut, there's like a little bit that we didn't get. So we're just going to get that now. Make sure you don't click outside the image, but if you do, you just press Control and Z and it would go back for you. Or if not, then you could also just press the history tool here. You can see and it goes 30 steps back. So you'd be able to do that too. But yeah, we're just going to kind of color out the stuff that we have in already there we go i think we're pretty much there now and remember that if you make a mistake or if you want to get it extra precise you can always paint back in onto the mask with uh the white which is kind of like rubbing out exactly so. right so ella made a very good point there you know obviously we did layer masks before in the past so it's the same principle effectively black is going to color in and white is so black's going to take something out so it's going to kind of mask over something and or mask it out so for example in the on the, on the example of the gradient map it's brought our lips out and then white is going to draw it back in so just as a little example if i press the white here you can see it's starting to go back to black so anything the any time that we made a mistake we could just get it back using the white so that is a really good um point ella and we'll just get that lip back in for now. Okay, okay, brilliant. And then I'm going to go back out and press Control and minus. And there you can see, guys, that the lips look really cool. And then it has that kind of Sin City neo noir effect. So I'm really digging those lips there. And you can see, guys, the difference already. It looks super cool. It's gave us that kind of neo noir kind of effect and you could effectively do that with anything so anything that you're working on um if you want to kind of give it that like obviously this image is perfect for it because of the way that she's like dressed like a detective with a gun but all of this stuff if you if, if, if you send me it's going to get better and better as we go along but if you send me this image and i wouldn't be able to tell that you know 
um, there wasn't some blinds there and that it didn't have this kind of feel because it just looks like it was always like that. But the original images we saw, it didn't have any of the stuff. I mean, we've even added the um, levels adjustment layer to make the light, the light boost out totally here. That adds to the illusion as well. So if you're doing this yourself, here's, the, here's one, one little tip as well. If you were working on this at home, pay attention. If you want to kind of create that blinds effect that we just created, you could really do this with your own photos if you wanted to, or if you were you know, a, a photographer or something and you wanted to kind of do this kind of photo with, with somebody else. One bit of advice that's very important is pay attention to where the light is. So even if you've just got mm -hmm. one light, uh, okay, so right, I'm going to get real quick. I'm just going to give you guys uh, the most like a gorilla tutorial of how you would do this <laughs> if you were doing like um, photography or something. If you've got like a strong light source, because you've got to think that your your image is going to be black and white anyway. This character is against um, a green screen, I believe. Um, so you could have this character, as long as you've got a solid background, you want your character to move slightly away from the background. So you've got a bit of depth between the character and the background. So it creates a little bit of dimension in your image, even if it's just a plain background. And so let's say we're recreating this photo, okay? You've got your character in costume, which is obviously going to add to it. She's got the red lipstick on anyway, which is the thing that you're going to isolate. So firstly, you want to make sure you know exactly what your character is wearing. So say you want to recreate this and you think, right, I want to pop out some Sin City stuff. Have your character wearing maybe plain clothes, but stick a couple of things out that you want them to pop. So maybe she has like a little handkerchief in a pocket. That's red. She's got some red lipstick. That's red. And then maybe something else. You could even do her, maybe her nails or something are red. So then you could pop out a couple of things. But it doesn't have to be red. It could be blue as well. Maybe she's got like a couple of blue things on. Maybe her hat's blue and that's the only thing that you want to pop out. So first things first, make sure that you know what you're gonna, what colors you're going to isolate and going to use for your, for, your, for your project. You want to get your, your character slightly away from the background so that you can shoot them with a bit of dimension. And then you want to be more cautious of your light source. Ideally, you'd have like an LED light. This was probably done with a free point lighting setup, so there was three different lights, but you could really do this with just one light. As long as you've got a good light source, it, to be honest, if you know this is going to be black and white, it doesn't really matter if the light's not like the nicest color, like even if it's like a like a, a slightly like orange kind of tungsteny light, it's still fine. I would get any kind of lamp that you've got that's slightly strong, get a friend or even if you're doing the photo on self timer, which is less than ideal, preferably you'd have control over it, but get someone to hold a lamp, like a relatively strong lamp, put it on the side so they're side lit. And then you're going to kind of have that effect that you've got here where the light is quite strong on the right hand side of a face. Then you can take the picture. So when you take the picture, you can see that the light is stronger on one side of a face. And that also adds a bit of dimension. It stops the image from looking flat. The same thing we mentioned about taking her slightly away from the background. You don't want to shoot her pressed up against the background because it's also going to make your image look flat. If you bring it forward slightly, you put the light on the side, that all gives the image more dimension. And then you want to take your picture. And that is why we put the blinds this way. So it's, I'm teaching you a bit of method to the madness here. So we added, once you've got the light there, when you put the blinds in, when you take it into Photoshop, you want to kind of do that to complement the light. So it wasn't like arbitrary to put the, the blinds there. The blinds are in the same direction as the light. That's why when you look at it, it's almost an optical illusion. You, you know that the light is there because we can see on this part of a face. And that's why when you see these kind of blinds, it, it makes you think like, oh, that is where the light is. So when you put these blinds in yourself, make sure you do it in accordance with the, with the light. So you want to kind of see where your light source is. Then you want your blinds to go down that way. You want them to maybe be di diagonally. You want to change your perspective. And that, that's why when we look at this and it feels natural. If we put the blinds starting from the left and going down to the right, it would look really weird because we don't, because the light source, our eyes is telling us that the light source is coming from here. It's not telling us that it's coming from there. So if we have the light and also her eye is leading into that direction. So it's also, we're being drawn that way by her eye. So yeah, that was a brief um, tangent, but I think hopefully a productive one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's basically just kind of breaking down exactly why we've done it this way and exactly, you know, from the uh, production point when you actually shoot the photograph to the point where, you know, 
you're editing it. But you can do all of this stuff. This is not difficult. Like I say, you could do it with a lamp. It, it doesn't really have to be like an expensive LED light. You could you could have a, use a lamp and just do this. Um, okay, so tangent over. We're going to continue with what we are doing. So yeah, guys, hopefully you've got the same thing I have. We've got these nice red lips. We've got this light source coming from here. And then we've got these black bars here. Next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to put in some smoke to our image, which should be nice and cool. We're just going to go to File and open there. And we are just going to press Smoke. And it's loading. Right. So, yeah, we've got this smoke here. And it's came in in a separate uh, layer, which is totally fine. What we're going to do is we're going to press Control and A, which we know selects all. So once you've done that, you're going to press edit and you're just going to go down to copy there, guys. We're going to left click on copy and right. Then we are going to press, um, we're going to go back to our source image here. And then we are going to press edit and paste. And that's done it on the gradient map there. So make sure that we you make sure that you're not selecting any of those layers. So I'm just going to press Control and Z to get out of that. I'm going to go up to where the black bars are and then I'm going to press Edit and then Paste again. And there you go. That layer goes on top. So whenever you paste stuff in, make sure you're not inside of like a mask layer or something because it will just paste it onto that and it might it won't really work. So make yeah, sure you, especially if it's black and white as well. Yeah. It's gonna especially if it's yeah. black and white. So obviously you clicked on the black bars layer there and I pasted it and then it came like this. So now what we are going to do is we are going to change this to a linear light. And then it kind of looks somewhat like that. It's popped in our image, but actually let's go to, we're going to try and see what's the best here. We're going to go to a lighting. I think that one works quite nicely. And then it looks obviously really smoky for her. Like she's kind of on fire even maybe, but that's okay because we're going to kind of just make a layer mask here and we're going to go around this. So I'm just going to move our call again. And what we're going to do is we're going to press the layer mask, guys. So layer mask is that one there on the bottom right, uh, add raster mask. We've made a couple of these together now. And then once you've made that layer mask, we're going to pick a nice soft brush and we're going to lower the opacity and we're going to just draw around her. Okay, so let's put the opacity at like... 78 and a nice big brush that big soft brush that one there 24 but we're going to put that one up to like 100 and we're just going to kind of take her out of this smoke okay and then you can just kind of draw her back out of the smoke Slowly just drawing her back out. It's not look pretty cool already. Definitely. You can, I mean, and with this, you can effectively do as much as you want. You know, you can add, yeah. you can put as much smoke or as little smoke as you want, really. I was just going to say, like, if you do it in small bits the way that you're doing it now, you can kind of take stock a little bit after you've done each brush stroke and think, like, is that too much? Do I like that exactly. bit? Do I want a bit more than that? So, And you can always kind of draw it back in as well as you go. I'm going to That's true. take it out. So, yeah, so as, you know, we we mentioned just before, guys, um, Ella mentioned for us, that we've got – our brush selected so sometimes i fly through stuff and i, and I kind of i need i need just um it's it's best to kind of mention exactly what's happening as well so when you press your layer mask click on the right hand side there once you've selected layer mask then you select your brush tool <clears throat> and once you've done that you want to make sure that the foreground and the background colors are black and white and as we mentioned before similar to the gradient map black is one that kind of takes away from stuff and the white is what adds back in okay so when we've got the black we can take away some of this smoke and then when we've got the white we can add it back in so i think that looks really cool but i am actually going to 
I'll lower the opacity on the smoke there to about 30, I think. So about there. And it looks pretty cool. Maybe I'm actually about, about 30. Okay, so then we've lowered the smoke to about 30. Got a bit more depth in the image here. It looks pretty cool. I'm going to actually, but I'm still clicked on this layer here. So I'm going to take some of the smoke out from where the gun is. Because I want the gun to be quite uh, highlighted because it's a key part of the image. Okay, and once again, like I say, guys, you can do this at your own leisure. You know, it, it, it can be as smoky or as not smoky as you want. And I want the light to kind of be popping a bit. So. Yeah, I'm getting a bit better. I'm a bit more happy with that. I don't want it to be too smoky. So there you go, guys. And I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty cool. Now we're going to make Looking another, good. yeah, we're going to make another layer here. So we're just going to add a new layer, and it's looking nice, right? It's like what we're going to do yeah. here is we're going to go to edit, and we are going to go to let's remember this filter, and we're going to find. Yeah, so we go to filter, we make a new layer, so just press new layer in the bottom right there, guys. Once you press new layer, we go to filter, and then we go down to render, and we're going to press clouds here, and it's just going to kind of totally fill up our image, but that's fine because we're going to, bit by bit, we're going to fix it and sort it out. So we go back down to clouds, and wow, so it's took over our whole image, which is what we knew would happen, so that's fine. Then we are going to change the blend mode on this, okay? And we're going to make that blend mode linear light. And actually, we're going to we're not going to make it linear light. We're going to make it soft light, okay, guys? So we go to soft light there. And you think, okay, it's not really even in the image anymore. It's still there. It's just adding a bit more kind of texture and body to what we're looking at here. So then let's put it down to, once again, let's make it about 30%. Okay. Right, so there we go. So we've got a clouds <clears throat> layer on as well. And although it doesn't look like it's doing much, it's still kind of adding a bit more kind of oomph to the image, I guess. All right, so we've got- A bit of atmosphere. A bit of atmosphere. I'm gonna rename some <coughs> of these layers here, guys, just so that we're keeping on uh, top of things here. So clouds. Mm -hmm. Sin City, eh? <laughs> all right so <laughs> we've got clouds and then we've got smoke as well i'm start. i'm thinking it's starting to look quite cool i'm digging it a lot and now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of because we've put a couple of blur layers on stuff which is good because it looks nice but we want something that's going to make our image just have that like kind of it's going to kind of up the sharpness a little bit so what we're going to do is we are going to press Control and A, and then we are going to go to Edit. So I just want to go over that again, guys. You you want to pick your keyboard shortcut, Control and A. If that doesn't work for you, I, um, maybe your Control key's broken, or maybe it's just you, you're using a different kind of laptop or something, or even if you're using a tablet and it's harder for you to use shortcuts, because you can uh, actually use Photo P on tablets and mobile phones, um, then you would go to Select, and you would press All. And that's select all. We've, we've done that before on, on a few things. Um, so yeah, we're going to go to select all. Once you've done that, guys, you're going to go to edit. And then we're going to press copy merged. Okay. So edit and copy merged. And that should copy effectively. I think that's going to copy like everything that's in here. So you should press that for me, guys. And now once you've done that, we're going to go to edit and we're going to go to paste and then it pastes another layer on top of everything. What we're going to do with that is we are going to go to filter and down to other and we're going to press high pass. Okay. So just to run to, through that again, guys, what you would do is you would go to control A, which is select all. Once you've done that, you go down to Copy Merged, 
So it copies all of the layers merged together, and then you would press edit again and edit, edit again, and then you press paste. And the paste <laughs> is effectively I'm going to paste that new layer in there. And then we'll go to filter and other and high pass. Obviously, that looks pretty crazy. You might be thinking, like, what's going on there? But that's absolutely fine. We're going to put that to a 1px there, guys. So we'll go to 1. And then we're going to press OK. And you think, OK, you can't really see anything there, but that's fine. Then we're going to switch that mode to linear light. See, this is the thing with blending modes, right? It's like you think when you do something, like, oh, you're like, what's going on there? But then you change the blending mode, and it, it has the effect that you want. Um, Definitely. And then we're going to make that blending mode. We're going to change the opacity down to about 40%. And that has just added a little bit more definition to the image. So then I'm going to call this layer high pass. Okie dokie. High pass, guys. And there you go. So I am pretty much happy with that. We're going to add a little bit of text on, and then we are more or less finished for our Sin City, and then we'll do some recaps. Uh, so guys, yeah, that is almost there. We added that high pass layer. We've got the clouds. I'm going to put a little bit of text on. We are media savvy. And then I think we're pretty much good for our Sin City uh, poster. Nice. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Noise. Noise. With an O. <laughs> Noise. <laughs> so guys, something that we figured out last week is that you can actually load fonts under here. We don't have uh, Gil Sans loaded, but Gil Sans is the media savvy font. So I know that some of you sent uh, you working. You don't have to do this, but if you do send it in Gil Sans, you do get an extra brownie point for that. Um, <laughs> but I know I, I don't have it, so don't sweat it if you don't have it. Uh, because I know Photop is an online software, so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit harder. Um, Okie dokie. But you can load the font, and if you did want to do that, what you would do is you would just click text. You would just you can click T, which would take you straight to that. You wouldn't click Control and T, obviously, because that's transform. It's just T by itself, and then that takes that gives you to the text layer. If not, it's quite easy to find. It's just a big T, and once you click that, you can change your font by looking at the top there. Um, we are going to go over this stuff in the recap. Um, and there we go. Deja Vu Sans is the one that I'm using now. But if you wanted to load the font, it says there, load OTF TTF from your computer. And you could load Gil Sans under there. And that would be pretty cool. Oh, dokie. And then we are going to go down here and... We're going to put the hashtag we are media savvy. So I'm going to make that nice and big. That's maybe too big. Change your size by just moving this up and down, guys. And the hashtag we are media savvy. Right? Capital W, we, capital A, R, R, capital M, media, capital S, A, V, V, Y. Okay. I'm going to move that along. We are media savvy. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of editing on that to make it stick out. Okay, I'm just going to pop that. And then just highlight that. Okie dokie. And we're going to make it like a plum red. That's the red there that we just selected. And yeah, so we're going to make it the same red as her lipstick. Okay. And nice. So there you go. That nice kind of plum red. And we are media savvy across the middle. Looks a bit plain, so we'll add a blending mode to it. And then we're pretty much done. 
So it's got that same kind of nice plum red as the lipstick there. And we've got the hashtag, we are media savvy. Uh, but actually, I'm going to make it much smaller. I'm going to put it in the corner. Sorry, but that's like a little bit of OCD there for me. I want it to look like a signature and not like a title. There you go. Hashtag we are media savvy in the corner. Let's put a little blender mode on just to put a cherry on the top. Uh, let's see what we're going to put on here. Let's go for... Let's go for... Because um, if we put a shadow on it, it's not going to do anything. So Because it's a black mm. background. So put a bevel and emboss. Let's try cornhole. Let's try texture. Really do much. It looks okay though. Bevel and emboss might be the one. Oh my goodness, stroke is like crazily <laughs> over the top. <laughs> Trying a gradient there. Once again, as we've talked about a few times when we've done stuff like this, it's always. When you when you're doing any kind of uh, you know you're changing the blender modes on on, a, on text or anything, it's really just trial and error because uh, there's not really a right option. It's just kind of what looks best for you and what you think works. Yeah, so, definitely experiment. Like I wouldn't know what all of the sliders do straight away off the top of my head before experimenting with them. Yeah, and it's it's you never know what's going to work on what what image as well. So it's like yeah, oh, good definitely. There. So that gradient overlay looks pretty decent there, actually, but I, I kind of want to keep the red. Um, out glow, that's always the one. And we can change the actual color of the glow. Make it a bit more black. Like I said, the black doesn't really pop. I think I'm going to stick with the bevel and emboss that's popping at the best and just up the size ever so slightly i feel like it's not i feel like it's not doing the we are part of the text before you're just going to click on text it's just because it's over the top of the white because it's over so. the top right yeah yeah but i think that's good enough i think it's quite good so there you go guys so we are media savvy okay and that is there, guys. We, 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 that's our Sin City project. We're going to get into some recaps for the next hour of the session. First, I'm just going to go over um, briefly each step. So, guys, I would say that we're more or less finished with this image here. So, once you've done that, guys, you would go to File, and then you would go to Save as a PSD, and that is going to save it as a Photoshop file. So, if you did want to come back to it, and you wanted to edit it, but you wanted all of your layers, that's how you would do it. And then you've got all of these different like layers here for you to do whatever you want and edit however you want, guys. And then you also have, if you go to File, and you can export it as well. So this is to export the image as a finished product there. Product? Product? Product. <laughs> uh, product. And you can go, <laughs> let's, let's make it a JPEG, okay? So to do that, you go to File, Export As, and then down to JPEG. And there you go. And you can put the percent of how high you want the quality to be. It's not really going to matter that much if it's just for the purpose of, you know, you using it. But if you wanted to publish it or anything like that, for a start, if you wanted to publish it, you'd maybe want to put your format as PNG. Is that right, Ella? If you wanted to uh, submit it somewhere or something like that, because PNG would be would be the highest, right? It depends. Or I, is it I, TIFF? I, TIFF's super high as well, right? Or RAW's obviously TIFF's super really high. good for... Yeah, TIFF's really high for things like print, but yeah. you wouldn't want to upload like a TIFF to social media or anything. Exactly, yeah, yeah, because it would um, be like massively high, right? It would be like 30, 30 yeah. megabytes. Um, J JPEG um, compresses the the image, so it means that you can have a smaller sort of file and stuff, and you get quite a lot of control over the quality, so the higher the quality of your image, the higher the file size with the JPEG. Yeah, yeah, but that so goes for... You know any image really but you can kind of visibly see the difference in quality with that slider with jpeg yeah yeah so then um, we've got but i use there. yeah i use png a lot for social media though yeah PNG is like a nice good quality format right yeah 
So you've got your PNG there as well, guys, if you did want to save that. And that PNG would naturally be a little bit higher than a JPEG. It would usually be about yeah. a few megabytes higher and uh, nice quality for you. But we're going to save it as a JPEG for now. Just for practical purposes, a JPEG's good. Like if, if, for, for, um, if you're just doing it for yourself, like we mentioned. So we're going to save it as a JPEG there. And then it would be source image. And there you go, guys. So that is our kind of Sin City artwork. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, it does. Um, it looks awesome. It's, a, it's pretty, pretty decent. So I'm just going to go through the steps once again, guys. And then we'll move on to a little bit of recap stuff. Um, right. So, yeah, we'll go through step by step. Once again, guys, if you couldn't follow our, or if it went a little bit fast for you, or if you just, you know, you kind of just want to watch now, but you want to practice yourself maybe next time, then the VOD will be there. It will be available for you to watch. So you could watch that and kind of just go step by step and get into it that way. Um, Okie dokie, guys. So we started with the background layer, which was just the girl smoking. And I think if we actually, un I'm going to untick these layers just so we can see the difference that we've made. So this is our finished product here. <laughs> I keep saying product, I don't know why. Uh, this extra text layer we don't need. So guys, I'm just going to untick these layers so we can kind of see the beginning. Turning off, on and off the visibility of a layer is not going to delete it. It's just going to literally, turn, as it says, turn the visibility off. So it still will be there, but it's, it's a good way to kind of monitor your progress with stuff. So turn off the visibility of that. And then that one and that one and that one and then we'll turn the black bars off and you can kind of just see step by step how we've done it and i think this will be a good way for us to kind of go through um the recap is to do it by each layer doing the visibility okay so that was our start in product guys and obviously product and then obviously product that's it that's it now um <laughs> so you can see there as i mentioned it's like it's, it's interesting, I think, because it looks a lot more like you can see that that is the part of it that's lit the, the, the most highly by the fact you can see in a hair there that that's kind of shining and bright. So you can tell that that's where the light source is. And it's also. Right, okay. So basically, with an ill health. Also intentional because that's how they have. Um, they've to put the layer, they've, they've put the light there, and obviously the face her eye there as well. So that's kind of um, illuminated that. And. Okay. You can see how they've done that there, Sorry. which is pretty cool. And also, guys, that it's it's a lot less apparent though. So it's like you can you can see that they've done that, but but when we uh, added all the things that we added in, it really brought that out, which is really cool. So you can see we've got the background there, and then we added the blur, but we added the levels first. So there's the blur layer there. So I'll do it actually in the chronology of how we did it. So we added the um, gradient map on next, which brought the black and white into the image. But we hadn't, and then once we brought the um, gradient map in, just don't mind that, that's just something extra that's put on there. So we'll put the gradient map in, and then once we'd done that, we used our brush tool to slowly kind of color out that image there, and just to kind of pop those lips out. We used a black brush to kind of draw them out. And then after we did that, guys, we used um, a levels layer. And that kind of, you can see the difference there. Actually, I wasn't really fully, um, I can't remember, well, I couldn't exactly remember just as we were going through it, how much of a difference I actually made. And you can see that it literally goes from a black, it goes from a grayscale image to a black and white image, which is really, really cool. So the, the levels tool is, uh, is, is pretty effective in that sense. And then we've got the gradient map there, and then we've got the levels there. Then we have the blur layer. So obviously that looks a little bit too sharp. So we added in a duplicate layer of the background, and we put a Gaussian blur over it. And then that became like that, softened it up a bit, and it looks nice and kind of soft, but also quite sharp. And then we added our black bars. And then obviously the black bars were very strong. So then we changed it into, uh, we put a Gaussian blur over it. Well, first, we warped the perspective, put them on the side so they matched our light. They lined up with our light as it goes across there. And then we lowered the opacity. We changed it into a smart object, as you can see there, so we could put the um, edit on the blur. And then we added a Gaussian blur to that. The next thing we did is we added the smoke in. And then once we put the smoke in, we, because that was over the image, we changed the 
blend mode of the smoke to lighten. So it was kind of opened up the background a little bit. Then we put a layer mask on the smoke and we masked out around her. So we have our subject still highlighted, but we've got a bit more to pop her out of the image. And then we added some clouds in. You can see that the clouds, you can see that they add a little bit more definition there. The clouds just kind of buff up the smoke a bit after we've, we've uh, took it out. And then we added a high pass just to add a little bit more high contrast on there, which the difference is very, very subtle, but that is actually one. If you really pay attention, you can see that there is a slight difference there. And that just adds a little bit more high contrast. And then we added the We Are Media Savvy. Um, the We Are Media Savvy, hashtag We Are Media Savvy. So there you go. That is our finished Sin City project, guys. And I hope that is okay for you. Like I said, the VOD will be there. And now what we're going to do is we're, I think we're going to recap some blemishes and then we are going to recap one image asset, I think, because we've still got a little bit of time. And then I think that would take us to the end, okay? So there is our Sin City thing, guys. I hope that you enjoy that. And if you have any questions, please uh, send them our way. And we'll be able to kind of go over anything that you need. And also, if um, you do try this yourself, I really hope that you do. Please send it to us. We've had some amazing submissions. We've had some absolutely cracking work being sent to us so far. So please send it our way if you do have a crack yourself, okay? So what we're going to do next, guys, is we're going to do our next piece. I think we're going to recap blemishes first because they only take about 10 minutes. And then we're going to move on to image assets as well. We're going to start with an easy one. And then if we've got time, we'll go to a more difficult one. So guys, yeah, we'll go to file and open. We're going to go into downloads there. And as you can see, guys, we have um, our Sin City resources here. And then what we are going to do is you should have these um, zip folders if you downloaded the resources here. What we're going to do here is we're going to go to blemishes. We're going to go to right click on that. Go to extract all. And then, yeah, we can press that, extract. And there you go. And it should open up our blemishes. And then once we have those, just double click. And absolutely cracking. It's got our blemished celebrities here. So we're going to have another crack at that. We're just going to do one of those just to go over for this uh, spot healing tool again, or the healing brush. And then once we've done that, we are going to look at some more image assets. And then that would be us for the day. So yeah, we're just gonna click off this and we'll go to file, open, and yeah, back to downloads there. And there we go, blemishes. Blemishes intro to photo P. All right, and then let's think. Let's do Cristiano Ronaldo, shall we? We'll do Cristiano Ronaldo for now. And then we're gonna go to open. So guys, you should have, if you've been with us before, you should have had these already downloaded. If not, then if you go just beneath the YouTube video, then the resources for this will actually be available. Um, and this one is a nice, basic, quick one for us to go through. Um, and I think this one is very practical as well. If you've got any photo of family members or any photos of yourself that you want to do this on, this is absolutely fine. Or even if you wanted to do it for a friend, uh, I think it's a really neat, a little quick tool. And you know, beforehand, you know, people would think, okay, well, I need Photoshop to be able to do something like that. Not necessarily. You can do it in photop.com. Um, the more the time that I've spent with this program, I will tell you that granted there are some limitations, but it is amazing that this is free. You know, this is a really, really solid program that is free. You know what I mean? It's not good. It, so it's, it's surprising that they've managed to build this much into a browser-based program. So... It's, really it's amazing, cool. really. It's crazy, Especially, isn't it? Because it's like, yeah, it's just insane. <laughs> like, but it's great. Um, yeah, it's 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 insane. The fact that the amount of stuff that you do in Photoshop, you can just do in Photopea as well. Like, it's it's really crazy that it has that level of uh, capability. Um, Definitely. All right. So first things first, we're just going to duplicate the layer so that we can see the background layer and then we have the foreground layer. And then we are going to, I mean, looks quite young here, Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm sure he must be in his twenties in this picture. Um, we're gonna kind of get rid of some of these blemishes, guys. Uh, if you stayed with us last time, you will have done this before. But you, you, like I say, if um, you've downloaded the blemishes, you don't have to pick Cristiano Ronaldo. You can pick anybody that you want. Um, anybody that 
you kind of would like to edit and we're just going to go through and do these it shouldn't be too long as you can see it does have quite a few blemishes there um yeah so what we're going to do is oh we're not going to make a text layer uh, we're going to delete that text layer there and yeah we're going to name the duplicate layer so let's just call that um duplicate layer i mean don't really need to do that but that's okay just to separate it from the background so we know which layer is which so we've got the duplicate layer and the background and the reason we make a duplicate layer on this is just so we can monitor our progress as we make edits on the top layer we can take the visibility on and off to kind of see the changes that we've made we are going to use the healing brush tool not the spot healing brush which is also good but we're going to use the healing brush healing brush gives you a bit more control spot healing brush is a bit more automated is that right oh, i think that's 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 uh, at least my understanding of it yeah so um spot healing literally heals spots you know it's yeah. it's suited to getting rid of just kind of one auto yeah. kind of blemish and stuff like that um and yeah healing is similar really it's for like bigger areas and stuff but um, there you go the so, the clone stamp though is really good for more sort of precise yeah um sort of um i don't know sorting out um say old photos or yeah. something like that yeah, is yeah, yeah. how you do that or if you need to change another texture or you know add in a bit of the background that's somewhere else on the image it's really really useful yeah so so yeah guys so we've got here the healing brush tool which is j on your shortcut and then you've got the spot healing brush and we're going to use the healing brush for now because although we are going to take out some of his spots we want to make sure that we have a little bit more kind of manual use of it we want to be able to kind of do it ourselves as opposed to let the computer do because it might not be able to identify it as well as we could although i'm sure it may do a good job uh and if you did want to try using the spot healing brush tool you are certainly welcome to but we're going to use that for now the patch tool um would be good for like big backgrounds so if you wanted to kind of take a patch of something and put it over something it yeah. would be good for that right is that right Ella? and yeah and so the patch tool will be good for more like kind of large surface areas um and then the clone stamp tool uh the clone tool as ella said is good for photo restoration so if you had a part of an old photo which was damaged like a lot of it was like it was like a huge line for it let's say you could use the clone stamp tool to kind of merge those together and to kind of clone over it uh if you do want to know a bit more about that tool don't really have time today because we're going to kind of recap some of the other stuff we've done but if you did want to know a little bit more about it you could go on to uh, exploring photo piece session two the video will be there and we did a couple of clone stamp projects in that so that is available if you did want to watch it yeah but for now we're just going to kind of take out some of these spots of like cristianos so you would press this so we'll make sure i'll get the clone stamp selected there select the healing brush tool and then we're going to press alt and just left click on that select the background there and then we're just going to see you can see already that we've got this bit of skin what you want to do is you make sure you want to uh, select a clean area of skin so you're not going to put a spot over a spot and mm -hmm. so i'm going to try and find the cleanest area i can but you also want it to be quite close to um some of the other areas because otherwise you are going to end up um you're going to end up with two different skin tones and it's not going to look very good yeah so I'm gonna kind of yeah so i'm taking away some of these blemishes have you seen those videos before like those viral videos where people like pop like huge spots and stuff like that oh Shit. my god you've seen it there right you must have seen those right yeah, I've seen them. Like, I mean, not that I particularly watch them or anything like that, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of their existence. What, what's the... It's like, like the TV show, isn't it? Like Dr. Pimple Popper Dr. or Pimple something. Popper, yeah, I've heard about that as well. What's the appeal there, right? Like, what's... what? I'm interested to know what the chat think of that, like, those kind of programs like Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> and, like, they're really famous. Like, those, the, the, there's, like, loads of viral videos of, of people getting the, the pimples pop with, like, millions and millions of views. And it's like for me, I there's never been any appeal. Uh, um, it, it, it's horror. I, I, I'm really disturbed by it actually. But uh, <laughs> I guess for some people, it's kind of like they say it's like satisfying. I guess. 
Yeah, I guess. Like, what, do you, what do you think about it, Ella? Well, not something that I would seek out to watch, I have to say. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe I'd have to give them more of a chance to uh, to to have a proper opinion on it. Oh, <laughs> I'd have to like do some research and watch a few. So let me know in the chat, guys. Pimple popping. Yes, I know. I, mean, I think it my... just makes us feel a bit anxious, really. Makes you feel like... a bit queasy. Popping my yeah. own pimples. I mean, I, I can do that, but um, yeah. watching someone else get their pimples popped, I don't know about that. No, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'll pass. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, guys. So you see this tool is very, very straightforward. We've been on this for like five minutes already, I think, and it's, it's literally we've done a lot of the edits that we were going to do. Um, we're going to do a few more just to kind of make sure we can smooth it out. But I think we're already I going on. The key is not to do too much as well, otherwise yes. it doesn't look real anymore. So um, two points there. You don't want any, like, really smooth areas or something when the rest yeah. of their face doesn't have that texture. Exactly. You still want them to look natural. You're literally just taking out some of... We're not really like airbrushing them we're not making them look like no is it a photo shoot because it's a kind of photo we're just taking out some of these spots you know um that's yeah. sim simply what we're doing maybe if you had a monobrow we'd maybe take out a little bit of the hair um <laughs> but yeah so as you can see that we're going to click on that duplicate layer there and you can see the difference right it's quite significant mm. i think you don't realize how much of a difference it makes when you're so doing it kind of and do then it. when you check yeah there's a couple more here we're going to do just on his head there like i said as well make sure that you take the right uh skin tone so you don't want him to be like um you don't want it to be like mismatched because that's gonna look really weird mm. okay we're almost done with this guys we're just gonna do a couple more and as ellis said there is um a point of diminishing returns to this you know if you get if you get past a certain point it's going to start to look weird or it'll look intentionally yeah. edited. Um, so on that same point, you can't just like color in over their face or something because yeah, yeah. it doesn't work like that. I would say, yeah, little dots and maybe slight brushes, but be very, very um, delicate. Um, if we wanted to, we could get rid of his mole here. I mean, it, it really serves no purpose other than like to entertain us, but let's, we, could, we could try that. <laughs> Right there, you go. See, he's got no more now. <laughs> so, and, and it looks pretty seamless as well. Okay, okay. So I mean, frozen off. We would call that a beauty spot. So I would say so. But uh, just for the sake of this, we can do that as well. All right, guys. So you can see I'm going to turn my duplicate layer on there, and you can see the difference that that has made. I'm going to click that one more time, and look at that. It's pretty pretty significant. Definitely. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to go to edit, <clears throat> and I'm going to go to actually image, sorry, canvas size. I'm going to make the uh, width twice the size of that. Just going to add that there. Okay, then I'm going to take our duplicate layer, which is the top layer here. I'm going to move that to the left, and I'm going to take the background layer, and I'm going to move that to the right. And there you go, guys. So you can see the side-by-side -side comparison of what it looks like before and after. So you can see that there's a quite significant difference there. It's like a like a like a clinic's like before and after all, like a <laughs> like a like, like a targeted ad you get on like Instagram or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, like um, you know, miracle skin cream. Yeah, exactly. But that's what they do. They'll just edit it like right. this. I know. If it's good enough for Cristiano, yeah, exactly. it's good enough for us, me and exactly. mortals. Yeah, so guys, don't ever feel it's hardened because there's that whole Instagram versus reality thing. And like, there's nothing wrong with editing your pictures. Like, that's totally fine. Um, but bear in mind that uh, when you see a lot of these people on Instagram and you see this like unattainable beauty standard, it's because it's edited and it's all edited. Um, it's, it's very be hard pressed to find like most of these info instagram inst influencers especially people like kim kardashian all of their photos even their selfies they like if, if someone like uh, kim kardashian is going to post a selfie they're not just posting that straight out they're going to post it to some they're going to send it to someone in their pr team who's going to edit it and then send it out so it's like 
just don't mm. ever feel like disheartened um about anything related to that because all of it is edited or at least a lot of it i can't say all of it obviously but yeah it's it's something to bear in mind definitely okie dokie so that is christiana right so i'm happy with that guys once you've done that we'll, we'll add on our little we are media savvy just to get it in there so yeah guys anything that you do with us today if it's the sin city image if you just want to practice with your blemishes or if you want to do some image assets just send it our way guys and we will uh post it so if you want to post it to social media it is the hashtag we are media savvy or likewise if you want to um share it with me you have daniel at media savvy cic uh, and you have ella at media savvy cic uk if you'd like to share it with her as well so whatever i'll put our email addresses in the chat thank you very much okay and then we've got the we are media savvy hashtag there i'm just gonna add like a random blender mode on here just to just get this one popping. and don't forget as well sharing your work with us um we do have our annual exhibition shine that will be coming up at some point so yeah. um you know feel free to share your work with us and it might get featured in our exhibition exactly right so there you go guys and that is amazing you know to be able to see something that you've made in an exhibition and in uh i think that it's such a cool thing to be able to kind of see that you know you could uh invite your family and they can see and it'll be there for a full week you know we'll be showcasing that work for for a full week so it's definitely worth having a look and you know I, um yeah it's a cool thing it's a nice little achievement for you to have like a piece of work that's on display so uh and definitely. also you know it may be in our booklet as well so it's like it could be in the booklet that people see yeah. when, they, when, they, when they read and then it could also be um you know, and if you ever wanted to get into like this kind of stuff, like if you wanted to kind of study it at uni or if you wanted to ever get a job doing anything like this, uh, it's portfolio stuff, you know, you could say, well, I've done this kind Definitely. of stuff. And yeah, you can you, say that you've exhibited. Yeah, you could say it's been exhibited in, um, you know, it's been on display. And also you have the actual work as well. So you can be like, this is the actual work that I created. Um, so yeah. it's evidence of your skills. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of... Um, it depends on, on on the provider, but a lot of places, they're not so much interested in, they are, they will be interested in qualifications and stuff, but they're also interested in what you've done. And if you get evidence that you've done mm. something, that is um, one of the best things you have. I mean, I, I watched an interview, not to take a tangent, but I watched an interview with Elon Musk and he was saying like, Elon Musk said, who is the person who owns SpaceX and Tesla, and he's like a huge entrepreneur and engineer. Uh, he said he's not really that concerned about people's qualifications. He says if someone wanted to be part of Tesla or SpaceX and they hadn't even been to college, he says he doesn't have a problem with that. He wants to see what they've yeah. done. He says if they can prove that they have, you know, worked at a certain place and they've created something or they have made something and they can evidence that, he said that's what he's interested in. So he, he, he's not. I think a lot of that. people are like that. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's not bothered about a thing that says, oh, look, I have a master's in this, so it says I can do this, but it doesn't show it. So yeah. if, he's got something that, if you've got something that shows that you've done something, then that is worth its weight in gold. Uh, so yeah, portfolio stuff, whether that is with film or that is with um, Photoshop or whatever your, uh, you know, your art form is, then just a little Definitely. tip as well there, guys. So yeah, hashtag we are media savvy, and there you go. We've got our Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, beautified and unbeautified and now we have <laughs> one little thing on image assets because we've still got quite a bit of time and then i think we should be about there guys so once you've done that excuse me go to file save as a psd or export as a png or jpeg and then we are going to go back to file and open we are going to go to download and there we go got that blemishes blah 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 and we are going to go to intro to photo p there guys we're going to go to extract all and we're going to press extract oh, nice little neck click and then it's going to open up this window just click x on that then we're going to double click on intro to photo p once again and we're going to do start image assets for now so we're going to take it back and start from 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 uh from this one and then we are going to switch it over. So if you remember last time, guys, we did our little um, cap and we put him into the book. 
So this time we are going to pick, uh, let's do this bridge and we're going to do this bike. Okay, and we're going to gonna get those both in. So we're going to press the background one here, bridge. And we're just going to double click on that. And let's see, okay. And that gets this nice background in here, which looks pretty cool. Nice background with some water in between there. Nice, like it's like half a bridge with like a good bit missing there. Do you reckon you can make that jump, Ella? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> pretty, pretty easy, yeah? Yeah, yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> so then- I'm scared what... of heights. The thought of that makes us feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be all right, though. You wouldn't, you, 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 if you fell, you would just probably be a bit wet, but uh, you wouldn't, you, I don't think you'd, you'd uh, suffer any injuries. It didn't look that high. I would, I would well. definitely faint on the way down the line. Um, <laughs> then we are going to get a bike, so object two, and we're going to get this biker and we're going to put him into our image, okay? So we're going to get him doing a little stunt. So guys, remember we have our selection tools here, and I'm just going to drag that along. All right there. <clears throat> so remember guys, since we're doing the uh, starter image assets here, let's kind of go through it very slowly, just so we can kind of have everybody to keep up. You've got your tabs here. Remember, you go to file open, you just select your background, and you put this one in here. And you go to file open, you select your object, and then you've got that one there. So we've got, I, I picked a bike and a bridge. You can pick the cat in the book. You can pick whatever you'd like, guys. And, and to zoom in, it is control and plus. And to zoom out, it is control and minus. Then, you can just drag your screen along a bit. Okay, dokie, guys. So now we're going to look at selection tools. So we've got our lasso in our object selection, okay? So you can see we've got three different ones here. You've got the magnetic lasso, which is going to kind of stick to it as we go around. You've got your lasso, which is a very manual one, which I uh, don't really often use for stuff. Do you ever use the, just the actual lasso, Ella? Um, sometimes if I don't need to do like a precise selection and it's quicker to just say you can scribble just... a circle around something yeah. than to do every single point. But so yeah, that's you, about it. Really. You just want to kind of quickly uh, get like a, just drag a circle out. You can use your lasso to that. And your polygon lasso, yeah. you can make points as you go along. And we've used that before as well. And you've got your object selection here and we have the quick selection. We have the magic wand and we've got the object selection. So the object selection you would highlight the object and it should select around the object. The quick selection will just kind of try and identify bits of the of the object there. And then the magic wand will also do something quite similar as well, right? But uh, so these are all kind of different quick selection, uh, selection tools, which you can use as well. So we're going to try one of these for this. I'm not sure how it's going to be because the, with the um, bike in the clouds. So I don't know if it'll be able to stick it out, but we'll give it a little shot. And then if not, we'll switch to the polygon last year. But we're just going to see. So obviously the smaller that you make the quick selection, the more it is going to kind of stick on the image. So if you wanted to get something bigger, then obviously you would just make the size of the, the um, brush, I guess you can call it bigger. Or if you wanted it to, to be smaller, likewise, you can bring it down. And that's going to kind of help pinpoint what you wanted to select around. So if I select the biker there, and you can see that it goes around the biker pretty easily, which is quite well, actually. Didn't really expect it to actually go over that, that easily. So there. But just a few tips, guys. We're doing this because we're starting on the uh, starter tutorial. So obviously, you wanted to kind of start with the more basic selection option that we've got there. And just to run through that again really quickly, guys, what I did is I went to quick selection. I right clicked on this, which is the third option down and I picked quick selection, which is the second one. And then I zoomed in. I made sure that my brush was really small and I clicked on the biker's torso and it actually did quite a nice selection around him. Now it is obviously that seems pretty convenient to be able to use the quick selection like that. And it is great when it works. But as you can see here, we've got quite a clear image. We've just got the cloud and then we've got the biker. So the biker is pretty much just an object in an otherwise blank background. Now, if you had a lot of noise in your background, if you had stuff that were in the same depth of field, so if the biker had, you know, there was 
let's say an airplane here but it was like the same size as the bike i mean that's a pretty a pretty rad example but yeah. if you had like the uh some other object here which was in the same depth of field as the biker it would make it much harder to use the quick selection so it is good but it wouldn't work all the time so it's it's good for now that's all that's all we need so once we've made the quick selection there you can see we get these marching ants and that means that he has been fully selected so what we're going to do next is we're just going to go to edit and we are going to press copy now if you are used to using photoshop this is one of the first differences we can notice in photopea if you're used to using photoshop what we would generally do is we would just go to the move tool and we would drag him out of the image because now we've made the selection and then we would just drag him into background one bridge but in photopea you can't do that so you need to press edit and you make a uh, copy of the selection and then we go into background one bridge and then if we press paste it can, should paste the selection into there so we're going to go to edit now and then we are going to press paste and there you go it pastes our biker right in and as you can see that's a pretty clear cut that we did with the object selection now one thing that i always talk about when we do an image asset is perspective um this is you know how close your image is to the foreground versus the background okay and that is ultimately what will make these kind of images look more realistic now if i put him here it doesn't look too realistic because he's quite close you know he, he looks too big he would be a giant falling off that bridge it looks okay i guess um but it's not i can see the closer that i put him towards us the more believable it becomes whereas if it's over there or if it's over here because that's quite far away in the fort in the background you can see that it doesn't look realistic at all he looks like a huge giant there because that is further away in the background versus the foreground obviously closer we bring something towards the foreground the bigger it will naturally get versus the background okay so that's why resizing is very important when you do projects like this so we are going to do that now it actually it looks like do you know what it is the, the interesting thing about this is He's actually in the middle of doing a stunt, but because of the way that we're putting him here, it looks like he's like falling off the bridge. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so it's gone from being a stunt to like a horrific bike accident. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. I, I was gonna say like it totally depends on where you put things, what size they are, and like what rotation they are, as to like the story of the image completely changes and what you think is happening in the image yes. is completely different and sometimes i think it's fun to put things in scenarios that don't normally fit yeah. like you know having say if you'd gotten the the cat you could have put the cat as like a giant in the background or like behind yeah. the bridge or something and that would have been a completely different we can still do that scene. you know that's still possible um <laughs> so we'll see how we go with this one but um yeah, guys, so exactly as Ella said, uh, it's you can choose two different ways with these kind of projects. You can even make it so it's more realistic and it's quite like uh, lifelike where it's, it, it, it's a situation that would be kind of realistic and you sometimes can't differentiate between what, what's originally in the image and what's something that you've put into it uh, versus you can make stuff like quite surreal and funny uh, if you wanted to put like a giant cat in or, or X, Y, Z. I saw a really funny one the other day, actually. It was that someone had used they had a bald head and they like kind of um blended and kind of clone stamped a coconut into the head so it was like that <laughs> so their head was like an open coconut <laughs> and then it would like had a straw coming out of it as well and i thought that was quite cool and uh creative was it i'm sure there was some um i can't remember if it was like a glasses company or something did something like that where they changed right. like the tops of people's heads into i think they were like sunflowers and that stuff like that familiar. i definitely have seen that before as well yeah yeah it reminds me of that so yeah it's just something you can do as well guys <laughs> if you want to <laughs> if you want to uh right so we're gonna go to edit and free transform or also if you want to do the shortcut guys it is alt blah 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 blah, blah, blah. it's alt control <laughs> and t and then you can hold shift there so we're not going to stretch the image if i don't hold shift it'll just make the image so he looks like really thin or fat um or just like totally squished uh, but yeah, we're going to make sure that we hold shift and then we're going to kind of drag him. going to make him nice and small. So it looks like he's doing a little stunt on this ramp here and make sure you, oh, something as well that I always advise is when you're dragging it, um, 
you may want to move him also. So you resize him and then you think, okay, I want to move him. But a lot of people select from the middle. Now in the middle, you've got this anchor point here. When you're moving that anchor point and you don't really realize, it can cause a lot of problems for you down the line. Um, mm -hmm. Because you can st things will start to move, and you're like, why is that moving? Uh, and it's because your anchor points miles somewhere else in your canvas totally. So just for now, I would say um, don't do anything with the anchor point. So it's that one in the middle there, and just make sure that sticks in the middle. So when you do drag them, select around them and not directly in the middle. Um, Good shout. Yeah. So you, you have the anchor point there. All right. So I'm, blah, 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 I think that's probably all right. I tell you what, I want it to be that in the middle. So it's like quite obvious he's doing a stunt. So we're going to make it nice and small there. And I would say, yeah, I want it to be fitting in the distance of, of like there. Okay. <clears throat> so there you go, guys. Wait, well, it looks like he's totally going to bail that. It needs to be <laughs> like that's about that. right. That's pretty good now. <laughs> Still looks like he's about to meet his maker. I'm worried for him. There, he's okay now. He, he seems like he's gonna make that one now. I've got yeah. hope. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I believe in him. <laughs> you can do it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, guys, we've got the bike there, and as you can see, now I've made him so much smaller. It seems just that little bit. Uh, more believable that he can kind of go into there which is is pretty kind of cool next we are going to add excuse me a texture and we're going to blend that into our image as well so let's have a little look back to open there and we have the abstract wall let's put the abstract wall in i think because we can kind of give it like a gritty effect if you remember last time we put in the bulker i think did we use bulker i think or maybe we didn't even put a texture on the no we didn't we put the we put the wall on right so we give it like a kind of gritty effect with the wall i'll tell you what well i'm going to put the bulker on that like nice abstract kind of camera effect and that should look pretty pretty cool we've also got the autumn leaves here which are quite nice but yeah, we're gonna put that abstract border effect on. So we've got a nice. Yeah, and then we're gonna press open. And bam, you've got this nice kind of red and yellow burgery kind of effect here, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> Once again, guys, I said that uh, this effect's actually really easy on a camera. Um, and it's often used in a lot of films, particularly, but it's used in photography as well. And generally it's just when a light becomes blurred it's it's when a light becomes so out of focus that it starts to form these kind of nice little shapes um and you can achieve this effect quite easily if you are filming a bunch of lights together which are kind of crossing over and you just take the focus right out um it'll reach a point where it'll start to become these nice little um light, lights here and, and and it looks pretty pretty nice i think so yeah and also you could do kind of nice stuff like this with where if the lights are in the foreground and then the the character that you're filming is in the background, then the lights are going to be out of focus, but you could also have the, the background in focus and it can kind of be like a nice kind of cool effect. Um, so there's many ways you can play with, with Boger as well. So just something to experiment with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to select and then select all. So we've got the full um, background selected there. And once we've done that, we are going to go back into background one bridge and then we are going to go to file and we are going to go to paste up oh, and we didn't copy it there so that's my bad so we've got two bikers that's okay um <laughs> we're gonna let's have two bikers in this image then a little bonus so we're gonna make that <laughs> nice and small and he's gonna be behind him now he's gonna have to be in front of him yeah there you go so they're both off together that's pretty, <laughs> actually. pretty cool. Yeah, so we'll go back to our texture-free abstract here. So don't worry if you're getting lost in these. To be honest, the Cristiano Ronaldo, the smoke and the sauce image, you can click X on those top three now because we don't need them. I'm going to leave them there just because when we go back through stuff, we can kind of look at everything we did, but you don't need them actually, guys. So yeah, once you've selected all, you go to edit and then you can go to copy and then we can go back to background one bridge and then we can press edit and paste and then bang it's over everything and always looks a bit scary at first when you first put a text on because you think well where's everything gone but 
it's okay because we're going to get it back. So what we're going to do is we're going to press Alt, Control, and P, or we go to Edit and Transform, Free Transform, and we're just going to make this fill the full canvas. There you go, guys. All right, and then we can press the tick there. Oh, we're going to maybe just pull it on the sides a bit as well. Just so it fills everything. Okay, and then we're going to change the blend modes here. So, guys, once again, it's just trial and error. It's whatever you think looks the best. So, darken looks pretty cool, actually. I don't know what you think about that, Ella. I know you're about 10, 10 seconds delayed, but... Um, I'll let you know when, when I can see it. <laughs> yeah, so we can just change these. Multiply looks pretty cool as well. I actually quite like Multiply a lot. But we are going to lower the opacity okay. as well, guys. Um, and... This, see, bulgar in particular, guys, especially when it's against um, an image that's quite light, uh, or even actually at nighttime. Bulgar is usually more effective at nighttime because you get a lot of neon lights and stuff. Um, I've seen bulgar, like, for example, I've seen bulgar. Well, I think I like lighten. Lighten's pretty cool. Lighten is quite nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, quite, yeah it's quite, um, it's like, it looks quite like as a 70s in a way, I think. If you know what I mean? I don't know if you know what I mean by that. Like, it's quite film, film camera effect. Yeah. Because it's quite bleached out. Um, also, important question yeah. in the chat. Mm -hmm. Hatham says, "What do you reckon Daniel's biker gang would be called?" <laughs> um, <laughs> what would my biker gang be called? I'll tell you one thing though. Um, I used to there used to be a program on uh, Fox Kids. I used to love when I was like, called Bikers from Mars or, or Biker Mice from That's Mars. The one. Biker Mice from Mars. That's what it was called, and that was awesome. So a little bit different, but pin light. So you like light and Ella. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, hard mix, don't really like that one, but that's a pretty extreme effect if you did want that one. Um, let's have a little look. Yeah, like I say, I'm gonna pick a couple more here and then I think we're gonna sell. Um, what would your biker gang be called, Ella? Um, that's really cool. I feel like I need time to think about that. <laughs> hey, you, what, you know, you, you've got to, you phone. know, once you commit to something like that, you can't change it because you've you know, you've got to get patches made and things, you know, you've got to decide carefully. Okay, so we had lighting, right? That was one that you picked. Yeah, so we're gonna have lighting and then we can lower the opacity. Can we have other biker gang name suggestions in the chat? Please? Yeah, I'm down for anyone else if they can let me know their biker name. So we're gonna stick with Ella's one lighting. And it looks cool, it looks like kind of dreamy. It looks a bit like a 70s kind of um Film camera effect, like you get on that kind of bleached out look on some film cameras. Do you know what it is? Uh, uh, it uh, 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 go on, go on, Ella. It reminds me of. Have you ever seen those, like, um, those photos of like some of the first skateboarders from the seventies? Like, like, like Lords of Dogtown and stuff. Yeah, like it reminds me of that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, it does have that kind of cool kind of uh, effect. I tell you what, I used to be the biggest like film camera elitist ever. Um, oh really yeah well no i used to just I, I used to not like it so i was like i guess the opposite of an elite like it was like uh, oh. I, I used to think digital is better why would you you can recreate any um film camera effect in digital uh but mm. my friend, friend went to new york semi recently and he used his film camera and some of the images he took like in black and white film they look so yeah. unbelievably good so it's like yeah it changed, changed my mind a little bit i was like actually you can get some really good stuff i think so i think it depends I yeah think yeah, it depends. I think that, that the way to think problem. about like analog and digital is to just think of it like a, a tool rather than like yeah. a, one's better than the other or a, you know, you just have to think like what kind of effect do you want? Yeah. The same as like drawing traditionally or um, drawing digitally or any of that stuff. Definitely. Digital collage, traditional collage, it depends on the effect that you want, which, you know, should kind of inform what, what choice you make. It's not like Oh well, that one's better, or that one's always worse, or whatever. So, totally. totally. I think it just depends on the effect you want. Definitely does. You're right. My two cents. <laughs> cool, but yeah, it, it, it kind of awoke me, awoke me. I don't even know what that is. It <laughs> me like to uh, like the capabilities of of it, of it. I think. So yeah, we've got the We Are Media Savvy there. I've stuck with this plum red for now. We do have the branded Media Savvy pink. Um, we don't have that for now, but that is okay. Um, let's see. We're going to put a little effect on this guy here. Uh, 
was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm worried about that. Okay, so I'm gonna that's that's what I'm gonna have for this one because I feel like it kind of blends with the image. So I put a satin, then I put gradient overlay and a drop shadow on that. Like I say, guys, um, just turn these on and off at your leisure until you get like a, an, an effect that you like for your text. Um, I just kind of whizzed through that text there. So all I did there, guys, was I pressed the T button there, and I dragged a text box over here. We had let's see what size we got that because I wanted it to be like a signature. Also, bear in mind, guys. When you're doing stuff with text, like if you if you watched last week's one, we did the movie post. Obviously, our text was very big there as we were making a title. When we were doing the we you can make the hashtag we are media savvy. You can make that into a title if you wanted to, and in which case it would be bigger and you would use a very like a more kind of uh, garish, more like out there font. But uh, for this, like for when I've been doing it, it's usually just as a signature. So it's usually like quite subtle, smaller, like very like um subtle font uh, and yeah so i had 64 px for that and yeah i think it looks quite cool because we've got like a gradient overlay but then we've also got that nice plum color and i think it also kind of complements the colors in the image a bit so it looks quite nice uh and as it is a signature i'm going to kind of lower the opacity down a little bit so yeah we could do that but actually i don't want to lower it too much because it's we're losing some of that color so maybe 90 uh, so it just it's 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 not too offensive, but it's also just kind of there as well. And it does have a uh, if you noticed it there's also like a snapping effect in Photopea like uh, like Photoshop. So if you wanted it to be in that nice bottom corner there, it will kind of snap into place for you these red lines, which is worth noting. And there we have these two bikers coming over this image into like this uh which which looks pretty cool right and i think we can maybe add one more biker in there should we <laughs> why not let's add one more biker in there why was i gonna i don't know i was gonna go and open it i can literally just duplicate the layer here. so we can duplicate the layer and we can move that biker there as well yeah he's this what this guy's about to land it so he's already like here he just looks like it's going in the water. Let's put him behind. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, there you go. And he is doing it in formation. I'm going to call that bike free. Okay, fantastic. And there's our another little image asset thing that we have done there, guys. So, okie dokie, guys. Right, we are going to kind of recap some of this stuff. And we're going to talk about some upcoming sessions and then we are finished for today, guys. So we are almost there. So, all right, guys, quick, super double quick recap of the things that we have done today. Oh, I needed that little neck click there. I don't know if you guys heard that through the mic. Did you, did you hear the crack <laughs> I, there? I heard that. Yeah, I did hear that. I felt really good. Um, okay, guys, so we have the um, bulker texture. We have the hashtag we are media savvy. We have the free bikes there, and we have the background as well. And yeah, you can make a nice little image asset. So please send us in any work that you've done. If you did, if you just did the blemishes, if you just did the um, the blah, 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 boom, if you just did the image assets, uh, please send that in. Or if you did the noir photo, so yeah, we did a nice little image assets there, a nice texture on it as well. And then if we go back to Cristiano Ronaldo. You can see the difference there that we did. We did some nice um, blending of, of uh, we used our healing brush tool to kind of take out some of the blemishes. You can see on the left-hand side, the difference there. And if I kind of fully zoom in there, you can see our handsome Cristiano versus slightly less handsome Cristiano, who has some spots, a little bit of acne there. And then... He is fresh faced on that side. So that is our blemishes tutorial, which is a nice, I quite like the blemish tutorial because it's nice and simple, but very effective as well. And people can apply it. I think there, I think anybody can do any of the stuff that we've done, but I think that in terms of something that's going to take you 10 minutes to do, you know, if a friend, if you wanted to say to a friend, like, listen, you know, 
uh, I mean, it be, might be a bit rude if you were like, listen, I noticed you were really sporty in that <laughs> picture, so I'm going to do this bit. But if you're kind of aware, like let your friend know that you had this ability to kind of edit these pictures, it's it's a cool trait, you know. Um, but yeah, don't go up to your friend and say, I noticed that that picture was quite um, spotty, so I'll uh, edit this one for you. <laughs> <laughs> probably not a good idea to say that to your friend yeah no but yes it's it is good to be able to kind of do that um and then guys we are going to go back to the very first one and that was our noir uh image or our kind of noir photo how would you call this like project it's like a i know it's a sin city well, well, I'm, I'm i'm lost because it's not really a movie but it's, it's not is it a photo would you say i'm not i'm just not sure how to phrase it like concisely um, I don't know. Maybe like an edit. Yeah, Sin City, Sin City photo edit, Sin City edit. I don't know. Either way, guys, the semantics not the point. The point is that it's a really <laughs> cool thing um, that we did together. So yeah, please send us any stuff in, guys. If any of you guys do this, I will be so um, stoked because I just think it looks so cool, and I'd really love to see you guys have a go at it. Um, and it's definitely this kind of thing is really cool for the future you know if you were thinking about taking up photography and you were doing portrait work uh if you've got any friends who do drama or do acting if you wanted to get some shots and doing some stuff like this it would be good portfolio work for them and it would also be kind of really cool for you to have any portfolio as well so something to think about yeah that sounds cool yeah and i mean like th th this could all have been on set like that's uh, it looks somewhat digital, but it's not too far of a stretch to believe that that was actually so something they shot, and then the mm. blinds were already there. I could definitely see that. Um, mm. But either way, they look really cool. So, okay, guys, I'm going to turn off the layers again just so we can see from the beginning where we started with this and then what we came towards to the end. So we're going to turn that text layer off, turn the high pass off, turn the clouds off, turn the smog off, turn the black bars off, and then we are going to turn off the levels turn off the gradient map and turn off the blur layer so that is what we started with guys then we added our levels layer made it popping actually we added our gradient map made it black and white added the levels layer to make it fully black and white because it was grayscale we added the blur layer to soften up that harsh contrast and then we added our black bars in we skewed the perspective of the black bars put a turn them into a smart object and added a gaussian blur to just kind of make it look more natural and then we added in the smoke we must made a, a layer mask kind of um masked around it a little bit just to kind of ease it up and to kind of stick out our subject we added the clouds layer just to kind of add a bit of definition to the smoke as you can see there we added the high pass just to add some more high um to kind of add a bit more definition to it and then we added the we are media savvy hashtag so there we go guys we have our noir sin city neo noir we have our cristiano ronaldo blemishes and then we have our oh did we click no we have our there we go we have our image assets project as well there and when you finish guys no matter which project it is you would just go to export as jpeg and you can save it as a jpeg there and there you go brilliant and i'm just going to stick on this sin city style image okie dokie so guys i hope that you enjoyed today's session as i said you can contact me at daniel at media uk. we had some great um people sent in some really cool movie posters from last week uh charlotte in particular sent me a really cool one uh which looked awesome it was very creative as i said to you guys before when you do these kind of projects if you make it your own you've got creative uh license creative like liberty to kind of be able to make it your own and you know you don't have to stick to how i've done it if yours turns out slightly different that's awesome you know if you kind of decide to use your own kind of um art like like artistic kind of liberty to be able to kind of change stuff and think okay this might look slightly better than that's great because it shows me that you're really thinking about it in a creative way outside the box and you're making it your own you know so that's that's really cool i love to see when people do stuff like that um but like similarly if you just want to kind of stick to it piece by piece like the way that we've done it today that's also absolutely fine there's totally nothing wrong with that as well because you'll still come up with a good project and if anything guys doing these kind of tutorials it's teaching you the tools as well so it's just like the the process of doing each step by itself 
it's great because next time you want to create a project that is of your own then you've already done these kind of tutorials you already know what each tool does so i think um it's good to watch these because i think it's great to kind of be able to see how it's done but i would definitely recommend that you give it a crack yourself just because you'll get used to using the tools and i think it kind of embeds that more in your mind so that for whenever you do want to kind of get the grips of it then it's there and once again guys uh, this is concluding our photo P session, but guys, remember the website photop.com. Uh, it is an unbelievable resource. I mean, I can't believe that this is free. I mean, it is basically Photoshop for free. Like there are some very minor limitations. And then obviously down the line, the more um, kind of professional your work will become, the, you'll, you'll find that uh, there, there are going to be some limitations, but that's obviously to be expected with any kind of free software. But Generally speaking, it is a great free bit of software, right? It's very, very good for free stuff. Like, I can't believe how good it is as a free program. It's fantastic, man. Um, and yeah, guys, so for the rest of the day, so from four to five, we will have a staying connected session. Uh, so you can look forward to that. And we should have a guest for that. Um, I need to kind of double check what's what, what, what's happening in, in regards to the guest, but we should have a learner with us on, on that, but I'll feed back to you on that one. Um, and then we have another Staying Connected on Wednesday, and we have a Staying Connected on Friday as well, which we should have a special guest for. So stay tuned for all of those because that is going to be really cool. Got a lot of cool stuff going on there. Yep. And then we also have um in a virtual well-being session with mel uh, i'm not sure if you guys were that should be on thursday i'm not sure if you guys checked that one out but that was really really cool we learned all about muscles and we had me and mel had a few laughs so it was really good so i would check that one out um <laughs> that's going to be on thursday and i think we have another cooking on a budget session this week as well is that right um yes i'm pretty sure so. we do I think that's wednesday so wednesday we've got cooking on a budget which is amazing um because you get to see kind of you know you get to learn some great stuff and i think that uh mel said that they made spag ball in the first session and that was about 70p a meal i think roughly so 70p a amazing portion. so that's amazing you know so if you were looking to save a bit of money during this time then i would definitely stay tuned for that one because there's a lot of cool stuff and guys we also have some really cool uh digital stuff coming up as well guys so obviously if you are watching this one i'm guessing you're into the digital stuff as well um this session is ultimately going to be um, kind of, it's going to evolve into another session. So I think that we're going to continue the exploring photo P, but uh, in, in a different kind of format. So I think that we're going to be doing a digital imaging course. And I am, um, I'm guessing that we're going to be continuing some photo P in that. And I'm not sure who's going to be teaching that, but I have an inkling it might be Lisa. And in which case, Lisa is, um, you know, a, a, a veteran of the software. She is very, very, very familiar with uh, photo P and Photoshop. So uh, I would definitely look forward to that because I'm sure you guys will be doing some really cool stuff. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that one. And if you I believe are, there's the possibility it could be me though. So uh, don't poss- get don't get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's also the possibility for me, Ella. Obviously, Ella is fantastic with this kind of stuff as well. Um, you know, Ella is an amazing illustrator, great at doing graphics design as well. So, guys, if I'm sure that Ella will have some really cool, creative, and fun stuff um for you guys and some really inventive stuff as well i'm sure that she'll 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 make some really kind of interesting uh stuff for you guys not to put too much pressure on you there ella sorry <laughs> but, 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 uh, <laughs> but i'm sure that she will so uh that'll be cool if you guys if you guys are looking forward to that um and beyond that we are maybe looking into moving at some video editing stuff obviously video editing is a specialty of mine so we may be looking at some well we probably are looking at some free software uh alternatives for video editing and all you would have to do for that, guys, I, I'm pretty sure there's not a browser-based video editing. I mean, it wouldn't really make sense. And video editing uh, is so intensive on your computer that I think it would, quite, it would be almost impossible to have a browser-based uh, video editing software. But uh, there's some free alternatives. DaVinci Resolve and also Film uh, HitFilm Express. They are both great. And 
they are free. They are both free. Um, so guys, stay tuned for that as well because we may be using one of those. You'd only have to download the software and then we would go through it together. So yeah, plenty of stuff going on, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube to keep up to date with it and also follow our Facebook because we will be posting everything there as well, guys. So hope yep. you enjoyed the session today, everybody. And we... Don't forget to fill in the survey. Oh my God, yes, of course, guys. Before you go, please, please, please make sure you do the survey. I can't stress the importance of the survey enough. I'm sure that you have done a couple already by now, but it is so important because this is how we track and monitor our sessions. Um, and if the surveys don't get done, then we have a really hard time doing that, uh, which makes it more difficult for us to keep putting these sessions on. So guys, um, if you could just fill in that survey for us, takes a couple seconds if you've done it already you already know exactly how to do it um and that's it guys and yeah you, you do you, you are encouraged to but you don't have to leave comments like saying how you felt about the session literally if you just do the actual survey like give it you know however many stars you think and what you thought about it that would be uh, sufficient enough guys so um please 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 pretty please cherry on top do that for us and <laughs> that would be perfect guys um is there anything else that i'm leaving out Ella, or i think that might be it yes yeah, so i think that's it so guys yeah once again staying connected from four to five and stay tuned to that um i am gonna go and eat some lunch i'm very hungry and very thirsty um but i potentially not 100 percent, but most likely we'll see you guys at four to five so let's nice okay so see you guys later um Right. enjoy your lunch hope everyone has a good hearty meal and please send me your work if you do it and do that survey okay so thanks a lot guys um see you later thanks bye